If you're anything like me, you started up Stalker Lost Alpha for the first time and found your performance to be complete garbage. I spent a couple of hours tweaking my settings to figure out exactly what was causing this. So first, I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips on how to hopefully, well, solve this quickly and get you up and running smoothly, and then afterwards I'm going to go into more detail. So, to begin with, set your render type to full dynamic lighting, DirectX 10. Then, go to Advanced, turn off Grass Shadows, turn off MSAA and Anti-Aliasing, turn off Vertical Sync, and finally, turn off Sun Rays. That alone has a pretty good chance of making your game run smoothly. Okay, so now let me go into more detail. I should mention that my performance tests are in no way comprehensive. I've only tested my own computer and your results are probably going to be different. But if you want to compare your computer against mine to figure out how similar your performance might be, then check the description below for my specs. Should also mention that as you're changing settings to figure out your performance, one thing you're going to want to keep in mind is that a lot of these settings actually require you to restart the game for them to take effect, but they don't actually tell you that. So oftentimes you'll change a setting and you'll press the use button, and the screen will, will go black for a couple seconds, which would make you think and made me think that the setting is actually taking effect. But it often doesn't. So even though the screen goes black, that, is n that does not mean the setting took effect. You're probably going to want to restart between changing any settings. Which is a big reason it took me so damn long to uh, figure out exactly what the performance characteristics of a bunch of these settings were. Although you can actually turn on and off sun shadows and grass shadows without restarting. So, let's just go with what settings I think you should start with and then where you can go from there. So I would definitely recommend starting with DirectX 10, without a doubt. I would never change this. I tested the performance difference between DirectX 9 and DirectX 10 and found that by going from DirectX 9 to DirectX 10, and leaving all other graphical options precisely the same and never changing them, I actually gained 10 FPS. So DirectX 10 just performs better. Then moving on into Advanced, I would recommend starting with everything pretty much maxed, so just max all these bars, you know, maximum, leave Sun Shadows on, leave Grass Shadows off, definitely. Motion Blur is just a, a taste thing, I have it off. Just check all that stuff. I would actually recommend starting with MSAA, turned all the way to the uh, bottom option and anti-aliasing set to two times to start with. Vertical sync off. Frequency 60 hertz. I'll talk about that later. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, definitely turn sun rays off. I mean occlusion on the best setting, HBAO. Quality set to high and then all of this stuff checked. So pretty much everything maxed except for vertical sync off, sun rays off, and grass shadows off. So start from there. And then from there, just ask yourself, is your performance good enough? Because these settings right now are perfect for me. My game runs at, so far the minimum is about 45 FPS. So it's definitely playable. Feels good. It's a good mixture of visual quality and performance for me. But ask yourself, is your performance good enough? And if it's not, let me tell you the first thing you should probably change. So if you need more performance, the first thing I would turn down would be anti-aliasing. And the performance difference for me, between two times, and having this completely off is about 15 FPS. It does make a pretty big visual difference as well, since this is a game that has a lot of... It has a lot of jaggy issues, basically, especially in the vegetation. There's a lot of very fine, very noisy sort of detail in the vegetation. And if you have that off, it frankly looks pretty nasty to me. So I'd leave that on if you can. But if you can't, that'd probably be the first thing to go. The, if you still don't have good enough performance, the next thing I would look at would be Grass Density. So if you turn Grass Density from max to halfway, I found that that gained me about 5 FPS. And then if I turn it all the way down to low, that gained me about 2 more FPS. So from max to low is about 7 FPS. It does make a pretty big visual difference though, since this is a game that has a lot of grass, as you can see. And it looks a bit barren and weird if you turn it all the way down. So if you are going to turn that down, I'd probably at most turn it down maybe halfway. And, well, hopefully that is enough to get your game running smoothly. Alright, now I'm going to go into even more detail about these options to tell you some of their performance characteristics and what they do. So all of these sliders. All of these sliders, aside from grass density, don't make much of a performance difference, but they make a pretty big visual impact. 
So I found that if I turned all of these sliders down, aside from grass density, I actually only gained 7 FPS. So the performance gain from turning all of these down aside from grass density was actually the same as just turning down grass density all the way down. So not much of a performance impact, but it made a pretty big visual impact, so I would highly recommend just maxing all of these sliders. Shadow map size, I did not mess with. Sun shadows, this is a fun option. Uh, this has a massive, massive impact on performance. I found that by turning that off, I actually gained about 20 FPS. However, the reason I don't recommend turning it off is because it also makes a appropriately massive visual difference as well. So this is what it looks like with it on. And then if you turn it off, this is what it looks like. Yeah, it completely ruins the outside environments. They pretty much lose all character, not to mention they become incredibly dark to the point where you can't really see the ground very well. It's pretty ridiculous. I mean, this is like midday, and it's only partially overcast, and yeah, I can barely see the ground. It, it doesn't make any sense. So big performance impact, but I would highly recommend turning everything else down before you turn that off. Grass Shadows is similar to Sun Shadows in that it also made about a 20 FPS difference to me. However, the reason I recommend turning this off is because it makes a fairly minor visual impact. So this is what it looks like with it on. You can see there's a bit... There's quite a bit of uh, shadows, well, around the grass down there. And then if you turn it off, it kind of loses some of its sense of depth and definition in the grass. But it's fairly minor, it's, it's not a huge difference. And yet it is a huge difference to performance, so you might as well just turn it off. Motion blur, that's just a taste thing, probably doesn't make much of a performance impact. Steep parallax, don't know what that does, but I flipped it on and off and it made no difference to my performance. Dynamic wet surfaces, I have not messed with that. Use DirectX 10.1 instead of DirectX 10. You might as well check this. Using a newer DirectX is, well, it's simply better. I mean, newer DirectX versions just run better and are capable of more things, so might as well check it. MSAA for alpha tested objects. That is going to turn on or off the uh, multi-sample anti-aliasing for alpha textures, which is going to mostly be vegetation. So stuff like this grass and the tree leaves and bushes and stuff like that are all made of alpha textures. So that's going to smooth out the jaggies on that stuff. And I found that the performance difference between having this off and having this on and set to two times is about 15 FPS, so it makes a significant impact. But again, it is a very visually noisy game, so I would definitely recommend turning this on if you can spare it. Uh, vertical Sync, you're definitely going to want this off. Vertical Sync will lock your frame rate to certain intervals to prevent screen tearing. So if you have a standard 60Hz monitor, like myself and like most people, then how this is typically going to work is, say if your FPS is like 65, it'll lock it down to 60. And if your FPS dips to, say, 55, it'll lock it down to 30 to prevent screen tearing. Which, of course, is going to absolutely ruin your performance. Unless you have consistent... Unless you have consistently good performance in a game, you're going to want Vertical Sync off. Because otherwise, it's especially in an FPS, it's going to often lock your... At least in, in this game, it's going to often lock your FPS down to probably about 30. Which, for a first-person shooter like Stalker, is basically unplayable. Definitely turn that off. Frequency 60 Hz. Um, if you have a monitor that has a higher refresh rate than 60 Hz, you're going to want to turn this off. If you do have a standard monitor with a refresh rate of 60 Hz, then it doesn't really matter whether you have this on or off. Pretty much irrelevant. Sun rays. I found that these make a very minor visual impact. Actually, I couldn't even tell what the visual impact was. I tried turning it from off to all the way on, and I looked around, and I couldn't even find any sun rays to speak of. But I don't... If I can't find them, then I suppose they probably don't make much of a visual impact. But they do make a pretty big uh, performance impact. So the performance difference between low and high is actually almost non-existent. There's like a 1 FPS difference. But the performance difference between off and any one of these settings is about 7 FPS for me. So given that I couldn't even find the sun rays, and yet they were still sapping about 7 of my FPS, I would recommend just turning that off. Ambient Occlusion. Right now I have this set on the best setting, HBAO. 
and quality is set to high. There is an ultra setting in here, but for some reason every time I set it to ultra it just resets back to high. No idea why. Anyway, this makes a very minor performance impact. Between off and HBAO high, it actually only made about a 3 FPS difference. So, might as well turn that on. And then soft water, soft particles, depth of field, and NPC flashlights I have not messed with. That pretty much covers everything I learned from mucking around with the settings. Again, I only tested this on my own computer, so if anyone out there has any performance tips for maybe different computer configurations or anything to add to what I've said, then feel free to leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching.